Yo guys, what's up? It's Brendan from Modern to Me, and today we're going to be continuing with for loops, and we're going to be talking about for loops in relation to arrays. Now, for loops with arrays is really what for loops are all about, in my opinion. I really think for loops are most useful with arrays. And so I've cleared out most of our code from last tutorial. I kept our scanner. I added this line, input.close. I totally forgot to add that last tutorial, and I feel so guilty. I feel awful that I didn't put that in there. It's definitely something you need to have in your code. So make sure you put that in there for this tutorial and we'll just learn from our mistakes and not do that again. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a really useful program that you can create using for loops and arrays. So first, let's create our array. Let's create an array of, let's just do floats because we haven't done a float array yet. So what you do, if you remember, is you type the name of the variable that you want to create an array for, then you type the uh, opening bracket and closing bracket then you name your array, let's name it just, uh, let's just go F array for, for float array. Let's go float R, A-R-R -R for float array. And then what you have to do is you have to set it equal to uh, either a set of data points, a set of floats we'd have to set it equal to. So we could put the opening curly brace and go like 2.67, 8.90, 5.62, and then have the closing curly brace and a semicolon. So we could do that. And oh, well, we'd have to have the F here. That's why we're getting this error. Always gotta remember to have these if you're on defining floats. And that would be one way we could define a, an array. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other way because we don't know exactly what we want our elements to be equal to of our array. We're gonna let the user decide. So we will have our float array be set equal to new because we're going to allocate space for this array. So let's have it be new. And then what you have to do is you have to type the name of the variable again. So we'll type float. And then you type the square brackets and then in the square brackets, you type the number of elements you want. So let's go six. We're gonna have the user enter six numbers. Okay, so we got that good. But right now our float array doesn't have any values for these six elements of the indices of zero to five. So let's have our for loop take care of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our for loop. So type four and your opening parentheses. And in here, the first thing that you have to define is the variable, the integer, that's going to uh, count how many times your for loop is running. So type int i, I'll just name it i, like to name mine i, and set it equal to zero. We're gonna set it equal to zero, especially in this case, and this is really why, like I said in last tutorial, you set it equal to zero usually in for loops, is because the first index of an array, if you remember, is zero and not one. So that's why you set it to zero. And what we need to do is we need to set i to less than six because we have six elements in our array, right? And this is gonna make sure that our for loop runs when i is equal to zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So that means that we want i to be less than six. But let's say that for some reason, we don't know how big our array is. We don't really, we don't know for sure. What you can do is there's actually a really cool trick you can do with arrays to figure out how many elements your array is, how many uh, floats you have in this float array. So what you do is you type the name of the array, float ARR, hit dot, and then right down here, the second option, length. This is a, uh, this is a variable that is right within this, this array, and it is really just exactly what it, sa what it says, length. It's just the length of the array. And it's not a method, it's actually not a method. Like I've been saying a lot of the times when you hit this dot, like input.close, you have to have these, um, these parentheses because it's a method with no parameters, but this is not a method. So you do not need these uh, parentheses. So make sure you don't put parentheses when you're trying to get the length of an array. Okay, I think we're good. So the last thing that we need is we need to increment this i variable each time. Otherwise it would, i would stay at zero and it wouldn't change. So let's type i plus, i plus plus. Okay, and there we go. And now, I didn't co uh, cover this last last video, but you do not need a semicolon for this i plus plus. You just need it in between each three things kind of to like divide them up. 
Okay, so now we're going to put in an opening brace, an opening curly brace, hit enter, and we have a closing curly brace. And now we are going to let the user uh, set values for each element of the float array. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type float ARR. If you remember to access an element, you put the element number you want in the brackets. So we are going to want to access each element in this array. So to access each element in this array, we're going to just put I in here. And what this is gonna do is it's going to be equal to zero the first time, one, two, three, four, and five eventually. And so we'll be able to set each element. So that's pretty cool. And we'll set this equal to input dot next float. And that's great. Okay. And let's prompt the user. We'll do system.out.printf. We'll work with printf this time. And let me just clear this out. And I'm going to type enter float number percent d. If you remember, what this does is this uh, replaces this percent %d with an int that we pass into the parameter. So you type a comma, and then you pass in the int that you want to be represented there. So we're just going to type i, and, and finish it with a semicolon. Okay, looks perfect. And now just for the heck of it, just so we don't just uh, put these variables into uh, the float, let's do something a little more with it. Let's have this for loop sum up each variable that we enter. So let's go float sum equal to zero. And what we'll do is we'll have sum is equal to uh, plus equal to float a a r oops yeah that's right flow a r i and if you remember what this is going to do is it's going to set sum equal to the previous value of sum and you put this as f right here we need to have this set equal to the uh, previous value of sum and uh in addition to the value of this float right here so essentially what it'll do is we'll just get the sum of all of the floats that are entered in here. Really, we don't need to put these uh, values into the, the uh, float array. We could just have sum be set equal to, or sum plus equal to input.nextfloat. We could do that, but we're, uh, we're learning about arrays, so we should, might as well just use them out, test them out, see how things go. Okay, and then we will just uh, system dot print ln or system dot out dot print ln and we'll print out sum okay sounds good let's run this bad boy see if it works control f11 enter float number zero <laughs> we probably should have uh should have had the uh well let's just fix this real quick okay so to stop this program let's just uh, hit this stop right here okay so now i can see it's terminated and now let's do, let's have this int that we pass in be i plus one. And that might look a little more user friendly. Now let's run this again. Enter float number one. I like that a little bit better. Okay. That's the hard part about working with arrays. You always mess, mess, mess things up like that. Okay. Let's go like 7.89. Float number two, 2.11. Two, one, sure, whatever. Float three, eight, one hundred eighty-nine point five four. Float number four, fifty-six point eight seven. Uh, five, three point one four one five nine two six five. Float number six. How about eight point zero? If we hit enter, we see we get the sum right here. I'm guessing this is pretty much what we wanted. We have this 189 here, it's 56, so that right there puts us around 240, and then with the other ones, yep, looks good. Cool, so that is a pretty, actually a pretty useful program. It's pretty, well, it's quite a bit more useful than anything we've developed so far, so props to you guys, you've made it this far. You're really are starting to make useful programs with Java. Wait, what is this? I sense 
A coding exercise, yeah!